Welcome to Make Something with me, David Petruto, and today I'm going to teach you everything you need to know about making bandsaw boxes. Check it. So I've gone ahead and cut everything up to size over on the table saw and the miter saw. And we're going to begin gluing everything up. And I'm batching some out so I can get three or four bandsaw boxes out of this right here. So now we're going to let that dry for a couple hours. I got some good squeeze out all the way around. I have all of my templates printed out at 100% full size. I am just going to cut them out of the template and then we're going to use some spray adhesive to attach the template to the blank. So my favorite blade to use for this is a 3 16 4 TPI skip tooth blade. I'm going to cut the outside perimeter of all the boxes and I want to cut as close to the line as I can without touching it. You want to leave a little bit of room where we can sand down to the line so you don't have to be super precise. But the more you leave, the more sanding you have to do so you have to keep that in mind. So now it's time to cut off the back. You want to cut off the back before you cut out the inside. I have my fence set to about a half inch away from the blade. There we go. So now that I have all the backs cut off, there's something I want to point out about the Fresno box or any box that has a round front. If you run it into the bandsaw like this, the bandsaw blade is going to want to pull the box away from you and that's a potential to get your fingers caught in the blade. So you either want to clamp it down and keep your fingers away and run it through that way or you can run it like this where it doesn't have the potential to pull it away from you. So now that all the backs are cut off, it's time to cut out the drawers and you need to find a good insert point to enter. I always like to go with the grain because that's going to hide our blade mark later. So I'm going to come in from this side and I'm going to come all the way around and then over here, I'm going to go with the grain and come in Go all the way around, same with this guy. This has a point over here, so I'm going to make one cut, come in down here. I'm going to stop, turn the bandsaw blade off, back it out, turn it back on, and then come in this way. You'll notice on my templates, the outside line is thin, and you want to cut as close to the line as possible, but without touching it. And then the inside line, it's thicker, and you want to run your blade right down the middle and split that line in half as you go all the way around. Tricky part is getting that blade back out of there. There we go. We have to glue our saw curve shut. And so we're going to squirt some glue in there, clamp that down, let that dry, then put the backs on. However you can get glue in there. I got this handy little syringe. Looking good, we got squeeze out everywhere. We'll let that dry for an hour. So now that that kerf is glued shut, we can glue on the back. You wanna to try to line up your grain and that'll hide the seam a little bit. I also find darker woods hide the seam better than lighter woods. So while the shells are drying, we can work on our drawers. What we're going to do is we're going to cut off the face, we're going to cut off the back, we're going to take that middle piece and we're going to scoop it out and then we'll glue it all back together. Now remember, with the round pieces, that blade is going to want to grab it and pull it away from you and possibly pull your fingers into the blade. So for the round pieces, I highly recommend you use a clamp. So we have our three pieces for the drawer. We're gonna take this middle piece and we're gonna scoop this out. So I'm just going to draw a line. Cut out about right there. So there are our three pieces. It goes together just like that, and that is the drawer. Now, you can see I slice right down the middle between the plywood and the, the exotic wood here, but it's not going to matter because we are going to flock the inside. I'm not even going to sand the inside. This will save us lots of time. We'll just glue it all together. Want to make sure I 
try to line up the grain as best as possible. Now we'll do the rest and let that dry for about an hour. Next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna sand everything. This takes a lot of time, but our templates are still on here and we're gonna sand down to the line along the outside of all the pieces. Sometimes the drawers don't fit back in there and that's because we cut that kerf and then closed it in. But once we sand this good, it'll fit in there nice and snug. You can peel off the paper and you wanna peel off as much as you can because this will get clogged up in your sandpaper and ruin your sandpaper pretty fast. And the longer it sits on here, the harder it is to get off. This has been on here for about a week. Now we're gonna add a round over to all the pieces. And what that's gonna do is that's going to hide the inconsistencies between the drawer and the box. I'm using the smallest round over bit that I have, which I believe is a 1 8 inch bit. It's just aesthetics, but I like the, the smallest one the best. Just a slight little round over. And that gives a nice little shadow line in there and more sanding. That's the thing about bandsaw boxes. There's tons and tons of sanding. So I'm just going to work my way up to 220 grits. And in the place where you live. So I made a mistake when making this box here. Instead of going with the grain to cut out the drawer, I went against the grain. And so now I have a visible line. So I am just going to drill a half inch hole and stick a half inch doll in there to kind of cover that up and give it a little decorative element. You can still see our line a little bit, but it covers it up a little better. Now it's time to put my favorite finish on here. You'll notice I did not sand at all on the inside of the shell or the inside of the drawer. That's because we're gonna flock that later and it's gonna cover all that up. So there's no need to waste time. For the finish, I'm using a mixture of boiled linseed oil and polyurethane. I do one coat a day for three or four days in a row. There's more details on the finishing of these bandsaw boxes in my book. I'm not getting the inside of the drawers or the inside of the shells. The next thing we need to do is we're going to flock the insides of all the drawers. And on some of them, we're gonna flock the insides of the box. And that's gonna give us a nice tight fit. But before doing so, we're going to mask it off so we don't get the flocking glue over places we don't want. All right, so now that we got our boxes all taped up, we're going to coat the inside with the flocking adhesive, and then you fill the flocker, English mother flocker with these mini fibers, and it's got the little holes on the end, and you can blow the flocking fibers onto the box. And so when you buy this stuff, you have to get the matching color of adhesive with the fibers. And I'm using black, and it comes in green, and red. So this stuff is uh, very, very light and very fine and gets into the air. You don't want to breathe this in. You also don't want to get the adhesive on your hands because it'll get everywhere. So I have a fan here blowing that way. That's going to suck up the fibers. Also going to wear a dust mask while doing this because you don't want to breathe this in. You want to put it on really heavy, way more than what you need and then you can dump the excess out and reuse it. Squarespace Templates makes creating a powerful online identity even easier. Each template is a starting point for a wide range of projects, whether you're pursuing your side hustle or promoting your main gig. I wanna go off script for a second and tell you about my website. As some of you know, I was a web developer for 10 years, and if you're asking yourself why would a web developer move their site to Squarespace, that's because I got fed up with updates, servers being down, servers being slow, and all the hassles that are involved in maintaining and running a website. Squarespace eliminates all of that. I'm able to sell digital files and physical items. I am so excited about my brand new website because it's so easy to use and it's easy to update and it looks fantastic. So start your free trial today at squarespace.com slash make something and get 10% off your first purchase. All right, now let's get back to these bandsaw boxes and finish them up. So the final step of these bandsaw boxes is to make a little drawer pole. You can make them out of wood, but I like the contrast that you get with a store-bought drawer pole. And I have this right here. And basically what I do is I just drill a hole and then I'll epoxy that in. I did get these on Amazon, but they're not always available. And so another option is to get a piece of aluminum rod and cut this down. You can cut this with a bandsaw or any woodworking tool 
and then glue that in and you can polish it and get the shine that you want out of that. There they are. If you're curious, this wood is Wenge, and then the middle part of this is Baltic birch plywood. I got that from my friends at KenCraft. They're a local family-owned business, but they do sell online at KenCraftCompany.com, so please check them out. I use one blade for all the cuts on these bandsaw boxes, and that's a 3 16 inch 4 TPI skip tooth blade. I have templates for all of these bandsaw boxes on my website at MakeSomething.tv. I also have eight other bandsaw boxes in my book called The New Bandsaw Box Book. I sell signed copies of this at MakeSomething.tv. And just so you know, these don't sell as well as my other small items at craft shows, and that's probably because of the high price point. It's really hard to get somebody to spend a couple hundred dollars at a craft show, so if you do take these make sure you have lower price items that go along with us i have sold a few but i rarely sell out of the bandsaw boxes when doing the craft shows i love the look of bandsaw boxes it's more about the look and the design than the functionality bandsaw boxes is one of the things that got me hooked on woodworking because you don't need a lot of tools and the design possibilities are endless all right folks that about wraps it up again i do have templates for these on my website as well as signed copies of my bandsaw box book at make something.tv as always, be safe, have fun, stay passionate, and make something.